Good afternoon, guys! Welcome to Life Apollo, some of the most trusted beard and automotive news. Happy to have you here. I'll tell you what, guys, we have a barn burner of an episode again today, uh, per usual, with brand new supercars, possible new hypercars for some of your favorite automotive YouTubers. And yes, it appears the McLaren has sort of stepped in it again. But before we get to that, guys, uh, we have a sponsor for today's video. Now, I don't do sponsors very often. We like to keep things pretty simple here. So you're gonna promise to give me just a little bit of a break when you watch it right here. Oh, <laughs> didn't see you there. Hi, I'm Aaron Paulos. You might know me from Life of Paulos. Many of you know me as the most trusted beard in automotive news, but what you might not know is I have more than one beard. Now, I think we all know that nobody out there likes fuzzy peaches. But I was in luck, guys. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their all-in-one performance package kit. Let's check it out. For one, I'm really excited to try out the new Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts. Additionally, Manscaped also created a ball deodorant called Crop Preserver, aptly named, and a ball toner spray. This is a game changer, folks. And yes, this is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Tear Trimmer. Yeah, my nose hair does grow like a caveman. I definitely needed this. But wait, there's more! Manscaped didn't fall short of thinking of your toes and nails, too. Check out the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Kit. And finally, guys, for a limited time, you get all this plus two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. So go to manscaped.com and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus the two free gifts that I mentioned when you use promo code PALOS at manscaped.com. Remember, your balls and your body will thank you. Anyway guys, big thanks to Manscaped.com for sponsoring today's episode, and Beard Nation, let's get ready to work. First up today guys, you know we like to start our episodes off with big congratulations or milestones in Jack Ultramotive. I forgot it yesterday, don't hurt me too much, uh, he just bought a brand new supercar. An absolutely stunning R8 guys, one of the most daily drivable supercars in existence. It's a car that I want in my own garage, I curse you Jack Ultramotive for getting it first. Get over there, wish him a big congratulations guys it's an absolutely sick supercar and i can't wait to see what he's going to be doing with it a big congrats to jack ultra motive next up guys you knew i had to be talking about schmig's latest video simply titled when will i buy another hypercar now there's actually a couple different reasons why i'm recommending this hypercar video from schmig he does talk about if and when he'll buy another hypercar for the schmig mobile fleet but he also talks about some things that kind of stump some people in the audience automotive community, things like what is the actual definition of a hypercar a now versus a few years ago, how that compares to supercars. It's a very interesting in-depth video from the seat of his McLaren Senna. If you're a hypercar fan in any way, make sure to go check out Shmi's video. Uh, you'll learn a thing or two. Next up, guys, a pretty funny video from Amelia Hartford with some great drag strip action as well. It's titled World's Fastest Twin Turbo CA Corvette Kicked Out for Being Too Fast, Phoenix is Dialed. Pretty funny video overall, guys. Her C8 Corvette just sounds insane, uh, is running well under 10 seconds, pretty much every single pass, even when it's dialed down. I'm very excited for more C8 content on her channel. It is her big claim to fame. It's what caused her views to jump up into the 200,000 view plus every single episode uh, for good reason. Make sure to go check it out, guys. It has everything you want in an automotive vlog. Hi friends, wife of Paulus here. Apologies for interrupting your regularly scheduled programming, but I am literally editing the video and just wanted to do a little bit of a quick plug. BTW, Erin just talked about Amelia Hartford. Her merch line just dropped today with Love Racing, so go check that out. I totally ordered the gray sweatshirt and sweatpants and I'm so excited to get them. Anyway, we are considering dropping some merch and by we, I mean me, I'm gonna be doing it. If there's something that you would like to see, please let me know at my Instagram, it's Wife of Paulus. I'm gonna have a little thingy right there. I will seriously take your comments and suggestions into consideration. So, 
And I'm not gonna leave you hanging here, guys. If you want some more drag strip action, Demonology has you covered. This one called Nitrous Oxide Dodge Demon destroys the quarter mile. This is why Nos is the best. Hands down, one of the craziest Dodge Demons I've ever seen and consistently puts up insane times. Make sure to go check out Demonology. If you haven't already, it might be exactly what you're looking for. Two more quick bites before we get to our main headline story of the day. Engineering Explained has a phenomenal video out about zero to 60 times times with Tesla. It's called, No, Tesla Can't Hit 60 Miles an Hour in Under Two Seconds, talking about the Model S Plaid Edition. If you want to know the true science behind some of your favorite very quick cars in the automotive world, Engineering Explained does it better than pretty much any other channel that I can think of. You will learn a ton. You will have a good time watching the video. Engineering Explained has been on my sub list for a number of years, and I hope you'll check it out too. Next up, guys, Washness Media. I mean, I've said it a hundred times before, I think Watch This Media is one of the most talented cinematographers in the automotive world, period. Uh, his latest video is California Cruising Lexus LC500 in 4K. Now we're showing you a couple images here right now, uh, but make sure to go check it out for yourself. Hear it combined with some excellent background music. Uh, you will remember why you fell in love with the automotive world to begin with. I cannot wait to have him come out here to Colorado and shoot both my Ferrari FF and my McLaren 570. It's high time we did something with him. Check it out guys, link in the description below. All right guys, next up, it seems McLaren just can't get anything right right now. Uh, as you guys remember, we covered the issue between McLaren and the Drag Times channel pretty extensively, the whole Elva gate thing, them giving him an Elva to do a video with, and then asking him to take down the video once he put it up, taking two weeks to correct it and eventually offer him another Elva for access. We covered all that in like three or four videos. So color me surprised when another high profile uh, Instagrammer in the automotive world uh, went public with some major issues with McLaren of Orlando. Now, some of you guys might already know the account I'm talking about. The account on Instagram is called 458 Destroyer. They're the current owner of the last generation daily driven exotics tire slayer. Shmi went down there to visit. They just bought a LaFerrari. They have a pretty incredible supercar collection and have a lot of McLarens as well. So one of the McLarens that 458 Destroyer owns is a very modded McLaren 720S. It's got the downpipes, bigger turbos, basically the works. And the best way for me to show you exactly what happened is to go through the chronology of the 458 Destroyer Instagram posts. Showing a picture of the McLaren 720S in question saying, can you believe that since my 720S has turbos and an exhaust, McLaren Orlando won't replace the accumulators that go bad on every 720S or the coolant line that has a hole. What great service at McLaren. Further saying, saying no to the 765 LT, Elva, and traded the 620R, done with this brand forever at McLaren Orlando. They only said they wouldn't touch the car after he shipped it down and they knew about the mods beforehand. They say the other problem I wanted fixed, a coolant line had a hole in it. I was happy to pay in full, was not asking for warranty work. Now we wanted to make sure we verified all of that guys. We actually called Orlando McLaren uh, to get a comment. They would not comment on why they wouldn't serve 458 Destroyer and his McLaren 720S, but we were able to find, we think uh, through some other sources that they just said they won't work on modded cars at all, even after they knew it was modded apparently and had it sent down there via transport. Now, obviously guys, is there right to refuse any car that's modded? I can sort of understand that to a little bit, but the, the fallout because of denying them service has been so much worse than just taking it in and doing some simple mechanical work on it. This is a guy that already owned a 620R, a 720S, was buying a 765LT and a McLaren Elva, and now all of that is gone. And, and the craziest thing here for me is it wasn't something he wanted covered under warranty. He knew that his car was modded. He just wanted McLaren to fix something that goes bad on a lot of McLaren 720Ss. And from my understanding, the work he wanted done is something very easy for McLaren to do and much more difficult for anyone that's not McLaren. After this went live on the 458 Destroyer Instagram, 
Instagram account, McLaren Orlando got absolutely flooded uh, with people saying they would no longer uh, partake in buying anything McLaren because of how they treated them in this particular instance. It just seems to me that for a, a brand that needed uh, so much goodwill over the drag times incident, not helping out a fellow McLaren owner, making him sort of get rid of all of his McLarens and future versions, it just seems like a major mistake on their part. Now I will end the segment here. Uh, it seems that whether or not a McLaren dealership will work on a modded car is dealership specific. So there are some dealerships that do and some dealerships that don't. I just can't fathom for the life of me why they wouldn't. It seems like such a very simple thing to do, but maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I've got it all wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. Am I crazy? If you're McLaren of Orlando, are you gonna work on the 720S? Let me know in the comments below, guys. I wanna get your thoughts here. I swear I didn't plan this next part, guys. Moving on, our next story is from Drag Times. Hilariously, uh, is newer, better, faster? Lamborghini Huracan Evo versus Performante Drag Races. I didn't plan that. It just happened to be the next story that we were covering. It's an excellent video from Drag Times who's been crushing it with drag races for many, many years now. And I believe we have an extraordinarily special drag race coming up in the next couple days. I don't wanna spoil anything, but make sure you're subbed to Drag Times. It's gonna be one of the most anticipated drag races maybe in the history of their channel. Go check it out. You'll enjoy the Huracan stuff while you wait. Then we got two videos on depreciation. Always good to stay up to date with this guy's four-wheel trader. Why the Ferrari 360 might be in the value sweet spot, the 430 versus 360 depreciation and buying guide. I've said it a couple times now, a four-wheel trader is an awesome authority on depreciation analysis and is criminally underrated in the YouTube world. Get over there, give him some support, guys. Uh, he is someone that I would like to see much more of, and if we support him, we'll get it. And then, guys, a video from Ideal Cars. It's called Amazing Luxury Cars That Have Depreciated Hard. Just a great list of very interesting cars, some of which you'll probably know have already depreciated, but if you happen to be in the market for a used something, make sure to go check out Ideal Cars' video on it. And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, lasting sort of parting shots here. What do you think about McLaren as a brand overall? Uh, sort of taking into consideration some of their recent, uh, well, we'll say PR woes uh, compared to like Ferrari, who sort of goes after people with cease and desists. Uh, it seems like Lamborghini might be the only sort of major exotic car manufacturer that's not doing some crazy stuff on the side, but maybe I'm all wrong. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy. And that's all I've got. Bye.